All right, Bears fans, I want to hear from you. If you think Matt Eberflus should be fired, like this video. If we don't get 2,000 likes on today's show, then there's a lot of Matt Eberflus's family watching this show that I did, was not aware about. And to the Flus family, I apologize. But like this video if you are in the camp that Matt Eberflus should be fired as head coach of the Bears because I'm about to go on a rant for why he is simply not head coach material right now. Chicago Bears Now is sponsored by RexMD, the online leaders in men's telehealth. Go check them out, rexmd.com slash chat to get a major discount. That link is in the comments and in the description. It's rexmd.com slash chat. Matt Eberflus is a joke. I mean, that's really the simplest way uh, I can put it. He does not have what it takes to be a head coach in this league. He's not the first one. He's not going to be the last of jumping from coordinator to head coach and it not working out. He's a joke, and there's a lot of reasons why. And let me get first past this. I'm not even really talking about X's and O's in this video, but if we want to go there, we can do that. How before the last couple of weeks, they've mostly run heavy zone packages, even though you have press man corners, and I get it's your philosophy, but like, why is it taking so long to adjust? Uh, but I'm mostly leaving X's and O's out of it in today's show, and Another just floose talk situation, I call it floose talk, has popped up once again. After the Bears' loss to the Vikings on Sunday, uh, he was asked about the center situation. Cody Whitehair gets taken out of the game for Lucas Patrick, and anyone with the brain would have been like, yeah, he needed to be benched because his snaps were all over the place. Well, hey, coach, why did you change centers uh, one drive into Tyson Bajan getting into the game? Well, floose said... We thought it was best for our team to have the guy that had more experience in their playing center. Hmm. More experience in their playing center. I don't think that's right. You know, Whitehair's played a decent amount of center in his career. Patrick's been a backup at times, a starter. He's been a guard at times. But, okay, let's, let's just go look. Let's see who's played more at center. Uh, Cody Whitehair has played more than triple the amount of snaps at center than Lucas Patrick in his career. These are the snap totals going into that game uh, because that was his explanation. Hey, let's put the guy who has more experience in there. Well, you didn't do that. You took the guy out that had more experience for Lucas Patrick. And here's why, which, by the way, you didn't make a mistake taking Cody Whitehair out of the game because Cody Whitehair got benched because he can't snap the football. At least he couldn't on Sunday. He's snapping it up here. He's rolling it to Justin Fields. He's getting the quarterback killed. He's throwing plays off every other play. There was a sequence where four snaps in a row were way off target. You took him out because he couldn't snap. Hey, Floose, this is all you have to say. Yeah, you know what? It was a tough day for Cody. It's been a problem with him snapping the football. Lucas Patrick's had a problem with that at times as well. But we had to make a change, especially with the backup quarterback, because uh, the snaps were too big of a problem. That, it's that easy. It is not that hard. Stop insulting your fan base. You do it all the time. We are smarter than you think. If you put someone in that stadium that had never watched football before and they got into that game, they would look at their friend that brought them to the game and say, hey, why is the ball all over the place to start the play? Because it's not supposed to look that way. Yes, every once in a while, a center is going to have a bad snap. Cody Whitehair had double-digit bad snaps. No excuse for it from Whitehair. But just be honest with us. Yeah, Cody wasn't getting it done, man. He threw too many plays off with the bad snaps, especially once our starting quarterback got hurt. We needed someone else in there. We had to try and get that more consistent, which, by the way, it wasn't much better. Lucas Patrick can't snap either, but at least you tried something different. But instead, you went up there and said, Oh, uh, let's get, we needed a more experienced center in there. You didn't put a more experienced center in there. You put a least experienced center in there. And if you want to say more experienced lately, that's not even really true either. Cody Whitehair finished last week at center, started this game at center, spent all offseason as the guy who was supposed to be the starting center. Lucas Patrick was hurt all of last year and didn't play center. So what in the fuck are we talking about? Like, Stop insulting us. It's disrespectful. It's unnecessary more than anything else. 
It's absolutely maddening, and it's not the first time he's done it. And if you had to guess, it will not be the last because he's done it for two freaking years. All right, before we continue with this rant on Matt Eberflus, Men's Telehealth, RexMD, today's sponsor. Fellas, do you lack confidence in the bedroom sometimes? Do you wish you could have a more fulfilling sex life? You're not alone. That's why we're excited to tell you about RexMD, the online source for men's wellness. RexMD offers an easy and discreet way to get the medication you need for ED without having to visit a doctor's office. With just a few clicks, you can have your medication delivered straight to your door and at a fraction of the cost of traditional pharmacies. RexMD's team of licensed physicians will work with you to find the right treatment plan, and their medication is made in the United States. So yes, you can trust the quality. Plus, their customer uh, support uh, team is awesome. Available 24-7 for any questions you may have. Take control of your sex life. Say goodbye to ED and head on over to rexmd.com slash chat. Start your consultation today. Take advantage of their best deal ever, guys. Up to 95% off RexMD. Plus, you'll get a free gift with our exclusive link as well. rexmd.com slash chat. rexmd.com slash chat. Generic Cialis in Viagra, up to 95% off, plus a free gift. Go check them out. It's rexmd.com slash chat. And again, this is not the first time we've seen this. And these aren't the only examples either. We talked about the Chase Claypool debacle a few weeks ago. Yeah, we gave him the choice to come to the game. He decided not to. 20 minutes later, PR person comes in there. No, 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 he was told to stay home. So the, the coach either lied to the media or is out of the loop. Why do you need to lie? Hey, he's not meeting expectations. Uh, he's inactive. We asked him to stay home. Pretty simple explanation. He's incapable of doing it. Uh, the center switch, which we just broke down. Listen, man, you benched a guy who wasn't getting it done. It, the, Cody Whitehair's a big boy. He can handle it. You don't need to cover for him. He's making $10 million a year. He's been in the NFL for a decade. He's been a team captain here. It's okay. Uh, and then just the refusal to discuss injuries. We saw it again today with the Justin Fields stuff. He literally, hey, uh, he's doubtful this week. That's all we can tell you right now. Uh, has the MRI happened? Yeah, but we don't have results. I guess maybe that's true, but like they don't have the results of an MRI by 1 o'clock in the afternoon the day after the game. Like I, I got to believe the MRI happened first thing this morning. It doesn't take five, six hours to get them in. Like it, it, It's just like it's not high school. You don't have to hide injuries. You're a one-in-five football team. You don't need a competitive advantage. I think most of us realize, and by the way, when you say Fields is doubtful, you're basically saying he's not playing this week. Yeah, world, Tyson Bajan's going to start. You don't need a competitive advantage, disadvantage thing, man. It's not high school. Just talk. It, it, we're adults here. It's okay. I don't think the Las Vegas Raiders' <laughs> chances go up or down in terms of winning if you talk about Fields' injury or not. The, you're not holding state secrets here, man. Like, this is basic stuff. Hey, Claypool's not getting it done. We asked him to stay at home. Uh, we'll discuss further with him what his future looks like here. Boom, done. Hey, Cody Whitehair was struggling. We thought uh, making a change at center with the backup quarterback made sense. Boom, done. Uh, instead, uh, Claypool, uh, he decided not to come. Oh, PR guy's got to save me. Uh, Lucas Patrick's more experienced. Uh, oh, wait, that's not actually true. And, by the way, he basically doubled down on it this morning. Like, what were we? what are we talking about, man? Like, and, and, and the reason I bring all this up, first of all, chime in here, please. Is anybody else sick of the floose talk, as I call it? Type me if you are in the comments. The reason I bring this stuff up, guys, is not because any of these isolated situations are a big deal. They're not. And in, in and of itself, it's not a big deal. I can think it's stupid, but it's not a big deal. But, like, to me, it just shows, like, you're not capable of being a face, a voice, like, you're just not. You're not. Look at your undrafted rookie free agent quarterback talking to the media basically for the first time ever. I know he talked some of the preseason, but he took the podium after the game. He was asked what happened on that interception late, which that's a tough moment for him, right? He could have said a million different things. Pretty straightforward answer, right? Yeah, I underthrew it there a little bit. That's on me. Something I have to fix moving forward. Reporter follow-up, is that a result of the pressure? Bajant says, nope, that's just the result of me underthrowing the ball. Got to give my guy a chance. Your rookie undrafted quarterback who's never been in the spotlight in his entire life just stands up there and answers honestly. Like, why can't you do the same? It, you're not throwing Cody White here under the bus. Everybody on the planet saw he was playing poorly and couldn't snap the football. 
I think Cody Whitehair would go up there and be like, yeah, man, it was a bad performance. I was snapping the ball all over the, over the place. I'm, I'm, I'm still getting used to get, being back at center. I got to be better. I think he would have said that. You, the head coach can't do that? Come on, man. Your, your rookie undrafted guy who played at freaking Shepherd College gets this better than you. He just does not check the boxes of being a head coach, which you got to be a face and a voice of a franchise. Roly, our producer here, he said it a month ago. When you look at Flus, does he look like a head coach? Sometimes it's just it's trust the eyes. He doesn't. When he talks, he doesn't sound like a head coach. It's just like I'm not even talking about X's and O's here, which have not been good, by the way, in two years. We'll outline that in a second a little bit, but it's just like, come on, dude. Don't disrespect us like that. Be honest. Be straight up. I get it. Every once in a while, you do have to kind of there, – there are uh, times with the media where lying makes sense to protect a player or to do this or to do that. This is basic shit, man. You're one in five. Just be honest. Like, it, it, it's not that difficult. It's not uh, – you're not breaking some, like, some rule within the NFL – coaching circle that you can't be honest like it's just it's ridiculous man subscribe to the channel if the bears f fire floose which i don't think it'll happen in season but if and when it does happen which i do think it will happen if he continues to lose we'll be going live just like we were less than two years ago when matt Nagy got fired and we'll be starting all over yet again hit that sub button uh we got you covered anytime news rumors trade buzz anything else drops uh when floose gets fired it's uh it's gonna be a hectic show i can tell you that uh, okay, you look at the Matt Eberflus tenure. Let's let's get to actual on the field stuff. Ah, uh, you're four and nineteen, worst winning percentage in Bears history. You've won seventeen point three percent of your games. That's pretty good. Uh, you're zero and eight in the NFC North. You you have not won a division game yet. You've lost fifteen out of sixteen games. You have not won a home game in your last ten tries over a calendar year, by the way. And zero two plus game win streak. So what does that mean? You can't sustain any even slight bit of momentum. You beat the Commanders on Thursday Night Football, have 10 days to prepare for a division rival at home without their best player, and you get punked, basically. Like you're, you're not a good coach, man. You're not good off the field. You're not good on the field. You're not good. Like That is the bottom line. Think about this. Your last home win was week three of last year against the Texans in a game you probably should have lost. Remember that game? It was ugly. Fields was terrible. The team was terrible. You barely won against the bad Texans team. The only other home win you've won in your tenure was week one in a swamp against San Francisco last year, which was a total fluke in Trey Lance's basically only start that was meaningful in his NFL career. Like, you're terrible. You're terrible. And then I know people are going to, in the comments, well, Harrison, the defense looks better. He's got the defense playing better. Yes, the defense has played a little bit better the last two weeks. Couple things. One, I never said he can't go be a defensive coordinator somewhere. He was a good defensive coordinator in Indianapolis. He can run a defense. I'm not saying that. Now, has he run a good defense here for the most part? No. He brought Allen Williams, who was terrible in Minnesota. He was bad here. He get, goes away. Yes, it's looked a little bit better under Matt Eberflus. But guess what? The two games we're talking about were as arguably against the worst offensive line in football in Washington. And two, against Minnesota without Justin Jefferson. Let's not act like the defense is balling out all of a sudden. Like, he can't be a head coach. It, the proof is in the pudding. It is obvious. I, I, I don't dislike the guy. I think he's a nice guy. I think he means well. But he's pissing me the hell off with how he's talking publicly. He's not getting it done on the field. Like, what are we doing here? What are we doing here? Matt Eberflus cannot be this team's head coach beyond this season. So who do you want? as the next Bears head coach? Let me know down in the comment section right now. Who do you want as the next Bears head coach? Not Matt Eberflus. That's all I know. Not Matt Eberflus. Appreciate everybody who made it to the end of the video. If you did, that makes you a real one. Give me a follow on Twitter if you did, at HGramNFL. DM's always open if you want to talk more ball. My name is Harrison Graham. We'll see you soon.